Hello folks and welcome back to my channel. In this video we're going to go through how to do a breast examination and how to succeed in the breast examination OSCE. We're going to go through how to take a history of a breast lump, the top differential diagnoses of a breast lump and actually go through a breast examination OSCE station and some top tips at the end. But before all of that it's important to have to know how to take a decent history of a breast lump. And as always, it starts with a presenting complaint, which is usually a, a lump that the patient may have uh, uh, noticed herself on personal examination. It's important to know if there have been any previous similar lumps, either in the same breast or in the other one. Uh, you need to ask about pain. So is the lump painful? And is the pain cyclical? In other words, does it particularly um, uh, coincide with her menstrual period? We need to know if there has been any a nipple discharge and as always with anything discharged we need to know if there's been any blood in it. It's important to know her obstetric history and the reason for that is because women who have been exposed to oestrogen throughout their life um, uh, are more at risk of getting breast cancer so this is important in, for example in their menstrual history as well. The onset of their men menstruation i.e. the menarche uh, the age at which it started and if she's postmenopausal, the age of her menopause uh, you know would expose her for you know if those are further apart that would be more exposure similarly with obstetric, obstetric history if she has had uh, many pregnancies that would be a protective thing it's also important to ask about family history uh, particularly first degree relatives so mother sister and daughter this is to do with the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes. Breast cancer does run in families. It's important to ask about drugs, so oral contraceptive pill and uh, HRT. And um, obviously full thorough medical and social history as well. When it comes to breast examination, this is obviously an awkward situation for all concerned. It's very important to pay attention to the patient's privacy and dignity and to mention that in the OSCE. It is absolutely vital to have a chaperone, to say that you would have a chaperone. This is one of those pass-fail things in the, in the OSCE, but also in, in real life. And as always with any examination, I've got my favorite mnemonic, which is GGIPP, greeting, gelling your hand, introduction, permission, and whether she has any pain. Um, the Examination of the breast starts with general inspection with the patient fully exposed for any skin changes such as any erythema, any edema, this thing called peau d'orange which is sort of uh, literally means an orange peel which is to do with the edema of the skin where there is any tethering of the skin or dimpling of the skin. You need to know about any, you know, just, just you know, inspect for any obvious lumps and bumps, any sort of anything particularly obvious. Any obvious asymmetry, uh, most breasts are mildly asymmetrical to some degree but obviously anything gross and obvious. Uh, as, with always, as with any inspections you need to look for any scars, um, any previous surgery including cosmetic surgery for example in the inframammary fold. Uh, you need to inspect the nipple for any discharge, for any excoriation and particularly any inversion. As part of the inspection, uh, you would ask the, the lady to put her hands behind her head and essentially just to raise her arms to accentuate any skin changes. Um, also, you would ask her to put her arms on her hips and press in. And the reason uh, why we would do that is to tense the pectoralis major muscles to, again, accentuate any lump if there is one, particularly, particularly if the lady has very small breasts. Then uh, you start with a palpation. You've got to make sure you do this in a systematic and a very professional manner. You need to use the sort of palm of your hand rather than sort of your fingertips or fingernails, even worse. Um, just to increase the surface area to catch a lump. The patient needs to be nice and comfortable at 45 degrees. You would ask her to put her arm behind her head on the non-involved breast first. So you start with the quote-unquote normal one. Uh, this is obviously just to get a feel for things and also to gain the patient's confidence. You need to do this in, in a systematic fashion. So most people do it in four quadrants 
uh, or you can do it in concentric circles. It really doesn't matter as long as you have a system and you don't miss any bits out. It is very important when you particularly feel uh, or palpate the upper outer quadrant to include the axillary tail. The upper outer quadrant and the axillary tail are a common site for uh, breast cancer. Uh, you must also make sure you don't miss out the inframammary fold and also the areola area and the nipple itself. And you need to warn her about this, but gently squeeze the nipple as well to see if there's any discharge coming out of it. Next, you move on to uh, palpation of the lymph nodes. And there are two groups of lymph nodes, one in the axilla and in the supraclavicular fossa. The axilla is best thought of as a pyramid and it has four walls and an apex. So you must examine those in a very systematic and thorough fashion. It's important that the, the lady sits up and she's nice and relaxed and her arm goes completely floppy and you support her arm and you um, palpate in the axilla uh, in, for the four walls and the, and, the, and the apex. Then you also palpate in the supraclavicular fossa for any supraclavicular nodes. I'll show you an example of these shortly. Uh, at the end, you would um, offer to check for any uh, evidence of distant metastases. So you would run your fingers down the vertebrae for any bony tenderness. Uh, you would palpate for hepatomegaly and also you would uh, auscultate the lungs for any evidence of lung mets. Once you've done all of that, you thank the patient, you wait and you offer to help her with her gown and her, again, privacy and her dignity. And then you turn to your examiner and present your findings. It's very important to know what happens after a breast examination. And in a typical breast clinic in the UK, there's a thing called triple assessment. And the triple assessment is, again, best thought of as a sort of stool or a tripod. Once one leg of the stool is a clinical examination uh, by an experienced clinician, radiological assessment, and that's basically an ultrasound scan, which pretty much everybody gets, and or a plus or minus a mammogram, depending on the age. So usually patients of 35 to 40 and above do get a mammogram. And the reason why younger women don't get a mammogram is because of the denseness of the breast tissue, which is much more fibrous. So it's not very productive to do a mammogram. Most people do get an ultrasound scan. So that's clinical, radiological, and the next one is pathological. So you need some cells or some tissue. Uh, you uh, get the cells with fine, fine needle aspiration cytology. So you stick a needle in it and draw some cells out of it. Uh, and that's for cytological examination. Or you can do a core biopsy, which is like a cheese core, and you get some tissue out for histological analysis. It's important to know the difference between cytology and histology. So that's what a triple assessment is. Now, a breast lump can be many, many things, but the following three constitute about 90% plus of breast lumps. A very common thing that you see in breast clinic is a fibroadenoma, which is benign. And essentially it's a small mobile a lump which can be painful particularly uh, coinciding with a menstrual cycle and sometimes people call it a breast mouse because it kind of runs away uh, under your finger completely benign they usually sort of peter out you know, uh, as the lady ages uh, this is a common thing in younger women the next one is a breast cyst um, of, of various sizes and cysts can be fluid filled and the best way to test that is uh, test for fluctuants by putting your fingers on either side and pressing down to see if it moves your fingers away. And a cyst, of course, can get then infected and lead to a breast uh, abscess. But the one that most people obviously are particularly concerned about uh, is breast cancer. Uh, and that's actually the commonest cancer in women. Uh, it's on the increase and it's very important that it's, you know what a breast cancer feels like. Uh, it's irregular, it's craggy, it's not usually painful. It can cause a bit of skin tethering. Uh, it can affect the nipple area. It can cause a nipple inversion or a discharge. Uh, and it's usually solitary and it's not, the patient will give you a history, we won't give you a history of 
it comes and goes and it's painful. It's you know usually a short period of time. It's been there, steadily getting bigger, affecting this the skin and uh, potentially causing a discharge. So the next uh, thing we're going to talk about is how to uh, succeed in the breast examination OSCE. Just a couple of top tips, uh, as with any OSCE, is to you know, do it in a professional way and to have practiced. And because the sort of awkward nature of the breast examination, this is particularly important. It's vital that you mention the word chaperone. Uh, it's vital that you pay attention to the patient's privacy and dignity and observe all the sort of cross-infection things, gel your hands. People allow for the fact that this is slightly awkward, but you know, in the in the station, you will get a a, a real woman with a with a sort of breast, um, uh, fake breast um, on her chest, and um, again, it's important to to know how to go through the motions. Um, the examiner will listen to your banter with the patient, how you carry yourself, how you uh, the sort of clarity of your expre of your instructions to the patient, and so on and so forth. So it's very important to practice like with most things. Video on how to examine the breast in a typical OSCE station. Hello, my name is Amir, I'm one of the medical students here. I've been asked today to examine your breast. This would involve me having a look, having a feel of your breast and having a feel of your armpits. Would that be okay with you? Yep. Yeah. Do you have any pain anywhere? No. Can I ask you to confirm your name and date of birth for me please? Yeah, it's Kate McAteer and it's the 21st of December 1993. Thank you. Are you nice and comfortable? Yeah. Could I ask you to take your uh, uh, gown off? I've asked one of my colleagues to join us as a chaperone. Yeah. And I've made sure that all the doors are closed and, and your privacy and dignity is ensured. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm inspecting for any obvious asymmetry, any lumps and bumps, uh, any nipple inversion, or any nipple discharge, any scarring, uh, and any skin changes. Okay, can I ask you to put your arms behind your head for me, please? And can I get you to put your arms on your hips and press in? Thank you. Could I ask you to lie down for me, please? Thank you. I would ask the patient to put their arm behind their back, and I would start with the, the, uh, the non-involved breast. Uh, have a gentle feel first in all four quadrants. And again, a little bit further in. I would make sure to include the axillary tail and the areola area. And I'm just going to gently squeeze your nipple and look for any discharge. And the same thing on the other side. Include the axillary tail, the areola area, and I'm just going to gently squeeze your nipple again to look for any discharge. Okay, thank you for that. Can I ask you now to swing your legs over and sit up for me, please? I'm going to examine your axilla, your armpits. Would that be okay? Can I ask you to let your arm go completely floppy and rested on my arm? And I'm just going to check the anterior wall, the posterior wall the medial and the lateral, and also the apex. Thank you. Put your arm go floppy again, and put your arm on my other arm. And again, the same thing. Anterior wall, posterior wall, medial, lateral, and then the apex. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kate. That concludes our examination. Now that you've put your gown back on, I would offer to examine your vertebrae, uh, your liver, and listen to your lungs for any signs of distant metastasis. And I'm going to present my findings to the examiner. Thank you very much. I hope you found that useful. If you did, consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the like button. I would really appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.